Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. And happy Wednesday. Um, you Hi. know, we <laughs> said last week that this is um this episode is gonna be about our recap of Perfect Match season two, episodes one through six, which we will get into. Um lots of thoughts. Hi. Actually, almost no thoughts because this is not a great season. It's no. just not off to a good start. I feel like I lost some brain cells watching it. I oh, think I'm 100%. a little stupider. No, I, I'm definitely I'm more word, stupid. I'm using the word stupider, so for sure. <laughs> so bear with us because I'm pretty sure I'm an idiot after <laughs> watching Perfect Match season two. I feel like it's a good background show, like just to have on in the background. I'm excited. Let's get into it in a little bit. Before we get started, can I tell you, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our pod besties <laughs> because after our last episode where we talked about um, going to the nail salon, press on nails, I have been getting so many DMs with your guys' suggestions and I did rip off all of my nails. <laughs> they look crazy. <laughs> Wait, I saw Deep D yesterday and she goes, I'm a man. And I was like, what <laughs> yeah. are you saying? And she goes... I am, I feel like a man. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, I'm supportive. And she goes, no, like, she goes, I have no nails. She goes, they're bare. And I was like, that's me every day of the month. I mean, right now they're painted, but literally bare nails. See, you I know, always have bare nails. I Just like a little, a little bit of nail would be nice. But I, for some reason, I got so frustrated the other day and I was like, I'm cutting them off. Like, oh, oh, I forgot you had really long nails. Yeah, they're just like my normal. Yeah, they're just my regular. I thought normal that they nails. were acrylics for no. the longest time. Yeah, no, no, no. They're my actual nails, so I just cut them. And I was like, ah, oh, I feel weird. Welcome, welcome to the short nail club because I have been in this club since the womb. I will never have long nails. Okay, I am. I'm in the same boat. I don't have like super long nails. They're like a very good size, like no, normal. Nail. I like it where when the white part of your nail, like the actual nail is so damn short. Yeah, that's... You know what I'm saying? I've been like that before, but I don't like doing that anymore. <laughs> and also, can I tell you after I did this, typing is so weird, even on my phone. Really? I'm Isn't like, it the best? Oh my God, I'm clicking weird things. Isn't it the best though? I mean, I've adjusted, but not really. Because, okay, when I say long nails, I'm not talking like crazy long guys like i'm not yeah it's only like half an inch long yeah it's just like a tiny 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 bit but the oh oh my gosh (laughs) i just look i one time tried on like long press on nails yeah or when i say long press ons again they were like the length of your nails yeah i could not get through life like i just (laughs) i just couldn't do anything i couldn't like wash my hair i couldn't type i couldn't do my dishes i mean those things were like flying off (laughs) Um, so I will always have short nails. I just, I cut them so short. It is like, it's crazy. See, your, your short is like insane to me. I used to do that when I was like a teenager and then I slowly got adjusted to like a little bit longer. And now Mm -hmm. that's like the look I like. It just makes me feel so good. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you know, when you like freshly get your nails done, you're like, Hey, look at this. I'm like, Oh, here's a coffee with my nails. You know what I mean? They're like, Take every picture. You're like, here's a drink. But anyways, pod besties, thank you so much. I love you for sending me all the recommendations. I'm going to try out a few and I'll let you know. And she won't feel like a man anymore. (laughs) I'll come back next week's episode. I'm going to have some press ons. Let's see which ones I choose. Wait, I love that. Maybe I should try some too. Let's do it. We'll have a little press on day. Yeah, my, my nails are looking a little... Brother, oh, no, I'm just oh! kidding. They look great. I'm just kidding. I painted them myself. <laughs> they look good. Anyways, <laughs> um, okay, so I had a discussion with a friend about this, and I had to ask for your opinion. If you got into a relationship with a guy mm-hmm. and he was following, like, Instagram models or really pretty girls who have a lot of followers, but they were local, <laughs> like, Oof. let's say they were local to Chicago, mm-hmm. Is that a red flag? And would you make him unfollow them? That is so, like he's not following like actresses or like, you know, like really popular models. It's like local girls. Yeah. Wow. OK, first of all, first of all, I will have to say that is a red flag. That's a red flag. It may, it may, it would make me feel some type of way. And actually, this has happened to me before. Really? With men on our show that I've dated. <laughs> <laughs> Where I've seen it and I've been like, 
brother oh but then you think in the back of your mind you're like back in my mind brack, but you think in the back of your mind you're like wait a minute like they've met before they're friends or acquaintances okay so, like, so that's another level that's where... another level so like yeah. if he never met you know when i say he i mean this imaginary partner hypothetical <laughs> partner yes. if he never met these women these yeah. like local women who are just popular on instagram is that different than him following also local women who are popular on instagram but he's like met them before yeah no i think that's a red flag like I, in I both like scenarios that. in both scenarios i just, just feel a red like flag all around because it's like why are you even following them in the first yeah, place yeah actually i totally you know what I mean? get it it's like honestly just from season six of love is blind said this and it kind of resonated with me when she did because i was like what does she mean she screens men by looking at their discover page like their for you page on instagram if it's full of naked models half naked models then that's a red flag like something's up with that like i don't think you should pursue that man so ever since she said that that's what i think about now when i like meet people i'm like let me look at your instagram <laughs> let me just click on that little look see up see what is it the discover page <laughs> i can't do that i can't start that conversation oh. i mean we've already talked about this but my whole discovery page on instagram it's just filled with blackhead removals and like pimple popping <laughs> yes like reels or photos so um unfortunately <laughs> i can't ask a potential partner that because the moment he asks for mine i feel like that's the end of the relationship <laughs> oh my gosh no what like if it was half naked men then it would be worse no i feel like he would prefer half naked men versus seeing a bunch of black heads be popped out of someone's nose <laughs> i feel like Actually, or back oh my gosh so oh, i not the back yes no. i love mm -mm. i love black heads being removed from the back and the underarms oh my no oh. <laughs> natalie but my favorite place is the chin <laughs> i am so disgusted internally i'm gonna try to you're right. You're not going to find a man if you please do not. It is deactivate it is, the guys, Instagram until you get guys, married. Guys, this is my like seriously, this is my like deepest darkest secret. I will only say it on this podcast. Deepest darkest secret but tell everyone. I'm else. only going to tell our pod besties, but I will never tell anyone else. Um I will never tell any man I date. I will never even tell my future husband <laughs> that I look at this stuff. I mean, you can't hide it from him for too long. No, but... I really will. I really, I really will. Well, you know, our pod besties still message us sometimes and they're like, hey, you guys promised that you would post your Discover pages. So we and tried. we never did. I, I I do send screenshots of it to Deep D to Ooh. show her like, yes, look at my Discover page. It's filled with like blackhead, whitehead removals, pimple, you know, <laughs> popping videos. But I literally can't get myself to post it to share it with you guys because... It just, I feel like you'll just look at me differently. No, you guys, honestly, she's doing you a favor. You don't <laughs> want to see it. It's absolutely disgusting. I'll give you an egg. But if you're into it like I am, girl, shoot a DM. I will <laughs> definitely send you some of these videos. Um, but anyways, I definitely agree because I feel like when a partner, mm -hmm. specifically a male partner, follows a bunch of like local women who are really pretty, um, who are popular on Instagram is so different than us following like Brad Pitt or Zac Efron. Yeah, because that's like unattainable, and we're probably like he's hot, but like nothing's gonna happen there. Yeah. But I feel like when it's local, you're like, are you DMing these women? Like, mm -hmm. why are you so women obsessed? Where you have to find these women and like follow them? Like, I just I don't know. You know, I feel like it's a red flag for me. Yeah, I think it's like it, it gives me a little bit of an ick when I see it. But on the other hand, because you know me, I just love to play devil's advocate. You're so compassionate. I, oh, yeah, I'm so <laughs> empathetic. No. Um, I know that for me and obviously this is just from my perspective when I'm like scrolling sometimes, I'll just like send love because I'm just like, oh, love that. Like doing great. You're looking good, blah, blah, blah. I just feel like sometimes it's not so intentional when it's just a like and we read so much into it where it's like oh my gosh like he liked my photo but maybe on the other side it's just like oh i know her she looks great okay like so that's it, another on, layer you know that's another layer that we haven't talked about is when he follows them mm -hmm. and also likes their shit yeah that i 
I'm raising hell. Yeah, I'm like, done. What is I'm the, out of it. What What is the? It's the fact that he followed them in the first place. Yes, you know what I'm saying. And I think the distinguishing factor would be: do, Does he know them personally? Has they Has he met them, or is he just following them because they look good and they're you know no, on Instagram? Let's say it's the latter. Okay, then it's definitely a red flag. Yeah, that's what I think. Hundred fucking percent. So the only reason I ask this is because I have a friend of a friend who is about to get engaged to her partner, who is a man, and he follows a bunch of local like Instagram models slash like influencers Mm -hmm. who are just really pretty. Yeah, and um. She's like, I didn't do anything about it because when we started dating, he already followed these women. But now we're like two years into our relationship. And I asked him, like, unfollow these women. And he's like, sure, but that's kind of weird. Like, why would I do that? And then she also saw that he was like liking photos of these women, too. But she's like, it's the fact that like he thinks it's weird that I'm asking him to unfollow these women. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think that's weird at all. I think he should. No, I agree because what you see on social media does really curate your mind a lot. If yeah. That makes sense. Like if it's in front of you all the time, it's like, why are you putting temptation in front of you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not saying he's ever going to cheat or like, you know, totally. step out of line, but it is kind of like a respect thing. It's like if you have a wife or a girlfriend or anyone that you're serious with in your life just like do the courteous thing and do not like it just like scroll past and the over the top courteous thing would be to go and unfollow all these people because if I go to your follower list and it's just a bunch of like Instagram models I'm just like what's the substance here like why am I attracted to you I would question why I chose you as a partner and I think I would become a little bit insecure maybe and be like gonna say too oh is this what he's attracted to like obviously he's following them because he's attracted Mm -hmm. to them like if I don't meet that like attractive standard I'm gonna feel like shit exactly and okay but I I was like the moment she said this friend of a friend the moment she said that he likes their photos I was like Oh, I would fucking flip a table. Honestly. I'd be like, I'm blocking you and I'm posting my titties. <laughs> and let me know how you feel when men like that photo, even though Natalie, we all know. <laughs> no way in hell you're posting titties. <laughs> the, when you said that, I was like, ma'am. <laughs> if I post my people are going to be like, who's that man? Who's Shut that man up. that she posted? I'm done with you. I'd be like, no, it's just me and my <laughs> size. <laughs> B A chest. <laughs> my mom. Messaged I would love to be a B, but I know I'm an A. <laughs> my mom messaged me the other day because I posted a selfie. Yeah. And she was like, this is too much cleavage. You need to take this down. I was like, mother. You should be like, mom, I'm also 33 years old and it's a hard life here. OK, <laughs> I should really send her the Instagram models we're talking about. I'm like, mom, look, it could be much worse. No. Well, OK, I will clarify. It wasn't like seductive photos he was liking. It was just like pretty influencers who are just like in normal cute clothes at a restaurant like they were he was just like following them because they're pretty you know what i'm saying and he just doesn't know them. doesn't know them i still think that that's a kind of like a red flag that's actually really weird to me because i do not follow anybody that i don't know personally or that i've met before or it's a celebrity yeah or it's a celebrity i know it is funny though that you mentioned that because um i remember when I won't say who, but the exes off from the show (laughs) when I would like, obviously we all had like mutual friends and things like that. And even like other women from the show who are like completely different looking than us, but I would see like them liking things and I'm like, you're just insecurity just flows. It's just insane. Um, Obviously that's on me and not on them, but I'm like, "Hmm." I know social media is hard because I feel like our parents didn't have to worry about this whole layer of like cheating through your DMs, liking other people's photos, is it considered like a red flag, all these things. And now we are that generation that needs to think about it. But anyways, I told my friend of a friend, this was like during a lunch, I was like, I think that if you asked him to unfollow these women, he should respect them and unfollow them. Because like, yes, he might not understand the insecurity or feel like what the fuck, but if it's important to you, Like, Mm -hmm. he should do it. Like, why kind of push back and make an argument over these other women you don't know? Yeah, agreed. 
I agree. I 100% agree. And, and the way he reacts when she does talk to him about it says a lot about him and how much he cares for their relationship and their future. So I think that's a big, big test. Put him to the test, honey. <laughs> what? Wait, sorry. I was, I was laughing because my stomach growled so loud. Did you hear it? <laughs> no. It was like, man. <laughs> and I was like. Yeah, you guys, podcast, we are recording early today. Yeah. Because it's going to be a I'm busy a weekend girl. for us. And we did not eat I'm a big this. breakfast girl. Um, uh, but anyways. So- yeah, well. Let us know, pod besties. Like, please DM us. Like, do you think it's a red flag if a partner follows a bunch of, like, local Instagram women or men? Um, Because I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Speaking about red flags. Hmm. So I saw the finale of The Valley, which is that show on Bravo. Yes, I'm obsessed with that show. So, um, so good. It was, like, the best scene. It was with Jax and Brittany, who Mm. were previously on Vanderpump Rules. But... Brittany had such a I choose myself moment Mm -hmm. and it was so satisfying to watch. So if you guys don't know, Jackson Brittany um, have been together for nine years and he treated her so poorly during those nine years. Like he cheated on her. He gaslit her. He just like lied a lot to her and would also throw her under the bus on camera, not only when they were on Vanderpump Rules, but also when they were filming The Valley. And so it's it was just like really, it, it was, was very hard to watch. And a lot of people advocated for her to walk away. And she never did during those nine years. But finally, I feel like she's seen the light. She says so herself. Mm-hmm. She's waking up and she's like, I have to leave this man yeah i think the most empowering thing was when she finally had that like aha moment because i think it's very strong of her to stay as long as she did because she wanted to stay for her son Cruz. yeah they have and, a son together and i think when you have like a kid involved it's no longer oh what is best for me it's what's best for him their son and Jack's coming in and like gaslighting her like that and treating her so poorly. I, I'm so happy she woke up and she's like, I need to get the fuck out of this situation. Totally. And it was Ugh. so funny because she calls him out for all the times that he lied on TV and in the press about her. Mm-hmm. And it just like kind of exposed him as a liar and how good he is about lying about stupid shit. And yes. I think that's the scariest type of person is when someone's like a pathological liar. Mm-hmm. I've experienced that with an ex. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and it's it's really tough when they are able to say the right things in front of the camera on social media yeah. and make it seem like they've changed or they're a good person and yet Behind it all, they have like an entirely different side. And essentially, that's what she exposed Jax. Yeah. She's like, hey, I know when the cameras go away, you're going to rage text me again. Like, you finally made an appointment to see a therapist. But it's so funny that I've asked you for two months and you made it a day before the cameras started filming. Another layer to all of these things is the fact that I think she's been protecting him totally for the yes. last what nine years because she truly does love him and wants this relationship to work and keep her family together. And I think she's finally hit that breaking point where she's like, I'm no longer going to protect this man because he's n- done nothing but hurt me over the no- last nine years. And I think that is like so empowering of her to do because fuck this man for doing this to her for so many years and there's also other cheating allegations outside of the one that happened like many years ago on Vanderpump Rules so I feel like he's like continuing to disrespect her and the audacity he has when the cameras are rolling to be like I'm in therapy. I'm like really trying to work on this and like I don't know what you're trying to say Brittany and then when Brittany is like getting like a excited with emotion in the moment and like kind of getting angry with him he's acting cool calm collected no but i know you know it's like she said, knows the truth exactly and as soon as those cameras go away he's gonna be like fuck you blah 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 blah, and start yelling at her and what's crazy is watching this season you can see small little glimpses where he like goes out loses of character, his cool yeah and you're like oh that's the real Jax. we know where you, we know who you are like yeah it's very sad and that's what reality tv is like so scary sometimes because you don't you you guys don't know the full truth none of us watching know the full truth oh 100 percent. i think it if someone puts on a good show yeah like that edit will win if someone comes up being like 
I've changed, and we'll talk about this when it comes to perfect match. Yes. But if someone is like, I've changed, and they talk about, you know, how much they've changed, they're going to therapy, mm -hmm. but you realize like, but it's not the truth in real life. Our pop besties know that I am very particular about my underwear. I am especially particular about my underwear during the summer months because nobody likes a swamp ass in this heat. Like, have you ever felt so constricted and hot down there because of your underwear? It's the worst feeling. So I love me undies. They are so lightweight and are made of quick drying, breathable fabric that they call breathe fabric, which has moisture wicking and anti odor technology. I like their bikini style underwear the most. Those are the ones I typically get from me undies, but they have over 10 different styles ranging from high waisted to cheeky briefs. And they also come in over a hundred different colors and prints ranging from black to your zodiac sign. Also, if you're not happy with your first pair of undies, it's on Me Undies. So summer is coming. Get every cut for your butt from Me Undies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash out of the pods. That's MeUndies.com slash out of the pods for 20% off plus free shipping. Me Undies, comfort from the outside in. In addition to Brittany calling him out about the therapy um, appointment and the rage texting, she also brought receipts on how he lied about things he said in the media and on um, House of Villains. Oh, yes. I love this part. Yeah. So um, Brittany goes like, you lied to TMZ saying like, we're living together. Like I moved back in. So this is when they were separated. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I never said that. Like, I didn't say it like that. And she plays the actual video that TMZ posted where he's all like, yeah, we're living together. See, and she goes, you're such a fucking liar. Exactly. And that's what you have to do with the narcissistic liars is you have to pull up the evidence in front of them and be like, this is what you did. Otherwise, he's just going to gaslight her and be like, I never did that. Like, what 100%. do you mean? Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm so glad she came and with lied receipts. on House of Villains that she had a stroke when okay. she really Really didn't. I remember watching the show and feeling so bad about that because I was like, what is happening? But how funny that um, Shake and Jax had like so much beef. <laughs> it was really funny. On House to, of Villains. On House of Villains. It was so funny to watch. But I remember watching House of Villains and Jax was like, oh my God, like my wife just had a stroke and everyone had so much empathy for him and were like, oh my God, like, are you okay? But I think he does it to gain when like, that was a lie. Sympathetic yeah. feelings from people, which is so crazy. And she's like, why would you lie about that when the doctor literally cleared me of that? Yeah, that's Very so crazy. That is like manipulative. And yeah. also that type of lying, I feel like is pathological. Yeah. But anyways, my whole point in bringing this up, again, it kind of relates to red flags, is I feel like when, when your partner or a potential partner shows red flags in the beginning, like do not think that they're going to change. I feel like yeah. that was like the biggest lesson that I learned in my 20s is I would date someone and there would be things where I'd be like, this is really fucked up. I mean, I even did that with my ex from the show. There was glaring red flags in my fucking face, but I was like, they'll change. Like, I'll lead them to change. Like, we just need to get therapy. We need to just go to couples yeah. counseling. And you realize like, like, look at Jackson Brittany. Nine years, he did not change. Like, yeah. it's really hard to change if they don't want to change themselves. And I feel like I had to learn that. Like, people aren't going to just change on their own or the chances of them changing on their own is very small unless yeah. they have, like, a rude awakening. You cannot expect someone to change. Like, you cannot be in a relationship with someone for their potential or who you think that they will be in like five, six years. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I think the core values of someone, it, it's hard to build those, you know? Yeah, people can change, obviously. Yeah. But I think another added layer to all of this is like the reality TV aspect of it, the fame of it all going on reoccurring seasons of a TV show. I think like Britney was very naive when she met Jax and like very impressionable. And he kind of took her under her wings. And I think like I think back to even like my situation dating somebody from the show after, you know, that whole debacle happened, like dating Kyle, whatever. <laughs> the debacle. The debacle. <laughs> I it was honestly all of you guys, my family included, was like, this is not your person. Like, what are you doing? I know. I was like, he sucks. But you make it fit because you want it to work out so badly. You have the pressure. You saw the potential. Social media. I, you see the potential. And you're like, how amazing of a romantic story would it be if this is how everything worked out? So it's like, 
I, like you said, until something so blatantly bad happens, and I'm so glad that Brittany's seen the light because, oof, he's not like good to her, especially during their separation, what he's done. Like, oh, that's a whole oh, other. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah. But, you know, this also reminds me of, um, I just watched the Summer House reunion, the part one of the reunion. And let me just tell you, guys, this is another show on Bravo. But there's this guy on there. He's part of the new cast. His name is Wes. And I have been obsessed with him since day one of this show. He's like so funny, charismatic. I've even seen people post about him on social media where they're like, we really like Wes. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, him and Sierra are so cute. Yes, and he's so outgoing, like just witty. And his TikToks are so funny. But it is so hilarious how in reality TV, within one episode, everyone can turn on you because that is what happened to Wes at the reunion. And it blows my mind. And he's been so incredible until like the last 20 minutes of the reunion. What happened exactly? Like, so, didn't Paige call him out for like using Sierra or not being like good to her? Yeah. So basically he kind of, Sierra and him had a fling over the summer and he wasn't like committing to her. And Sierra's very much like a relationship girly. Like she's not going to fuck around. And basically his excuse for like not progressing the relationship is oh like i'm new to the bravo world like there's so many women in my dms oh my god there's like and then Paige had the best answer ever she's like uh you're talking you you were talking to the wrong audience right now because clearly all of them are like seasoned reality tv stars and so she's like uh we're not the best people to be talking to about that like he'll learn but because of that everyone's like Wes like what the fuck yeah like he totally hurt someone because he was more obsessed with the fame the for clout. being the newest cast member of like summer mm -hmm. house and all the clout that's so fucking crazy it's so crazy to be honest that kind of reminds me of um your second ex from the show <laughs> Someone yeah. just gets a little caught up and yeah. yep, exactly. you know, kind of loses the path. Anyways, but yeah, ex that. but it's so funny to me. It struck me so much because I was like, holy shit, like your fate can change in, in a matter of minutes when it comes to reality TV. Like this man was so loved and now all of the comments on his things are like, we were counting on you. We were rooting for you. You let us down. You disappointed us. And we're like, oh, Wes, Wes, Wes. You're learning, you're learning it the hard way. <laughs> yeah, anyways, like watching, it's just, I don't know, I've been so, watching so much reality TV lately and I'm realizing the impacts that it has on people and I'm getting like secondhand anxiety for people. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying because we've kind of been in their shoes in that we get how it might feel like when it feels like the world is against you. Yes. Like even for us, like in our small little love is blind bubble, it feels like your entire world. And yeah. so when you get like, one sort of negative feedback just coming at you. It just feels like everything's crumbling. Yes. Because you, it's like an experience you will never, ever get to experience again. Yeah. Where it feels like <laughs> thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people are just coming after you. Yeah. So that sucks for Wes, but yeah. you always hope that it's like a learning lesson. Exactly. Like I kind of love when justice is served. Yes. He needed to learn this lesson. And yes, it's going to be hard for him. But a lot of the comments, which I really appreciated from the public to him was, Wes, you really did fuck up. <laughs> and this is a learning lesson for you. But don't worry, buddy. Everyone that's sitting on that couch has gone through the same process of getting hate. Like, it'll blow totally. over. Don't worry but about it. But it's like it. Jax and Brittany. It's like, yeah, Jax is an asshole to his wife. Ugh. But I've seen the comments where people are just like going at him and calling him out. And you could tell he's like kind of spiraling based on like what he's posting on social media and then deleting. Like he posted a tweet and then deleted it. Yeah. And it was definitely in response to that episode, um, that final conversation with Brittany and all mm -hmm. the love she's getting on social media and all the hate that he's getting. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a little piece of me is like, I get it. Yeah, no, like, I, I get it. Exactly. And I think that a lot of Jax's lying comes from the fact that he's insecure about some things. Anyways, we won't get into all of that, but it is, I find it fascinating having been in their shoes like to a small degree of how people spiral and what they do on social media and the press and 
like what their actions are post show based on what the public's comments are. I mean, we yes. have experienced that firsthand totally. with a couple of cast members, not only from our season, but across the season. Exactly. And we've taken the approach of being a little bit more quiet about things. I mean, maybe you have in a little I bit, mean, but, I'm, but you are in your era of quiet <laughs> now. <laughs> like you're not going to do anything crazy. I was quieter and more conscious of what I was saying right when our season came out. And then when someone started chatting it up, I was like, oh, I'm I was like, it's all that, no boundaries. Isn't that the scariest thing ever? Because when you're so close to somebody and I'm going to speak to my ex, whatever, when you're so close to somebody, and you have this bond, you're like, they're never going to fuck me over. Like we are so special to each other. And then as soon as you break up, 100%. You're like, oh my God, I'm so anxious. Like, what are they going to say? Like, what secrets are they going to... You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you just can't ever be vulnerable with other reality TV people anymore. 100%. I mean... It's just scary. I don't think I've ever talked about this, but Shane one time posted a private love letter that I wrote him, and he also leaked a video of us in bed. It wasn't anything like sexual, but it it was me saying like, I wish I said yes at the altar. And he's like prompting me to say it or pushing yeah. me to say it. That was um mm, he angry. deleted both, I think, at at some point, which probably because of all the backlash he got. But I think about that and be like, those were private moments just for your eyes, and you used it against me for I have no reason. I was exactly. like, it didn't prove really anything except for that I loved you. But also it's crazy because there's also more context to those things. Mm -hmm. I feel like I did both because I needed to calm him down. Yeah. He was so upset from me saying no at the altar. Like it was such an ego hit for him mm -hmm. that like obviously when we were back in a relationship after filming, it was like one of those things where it's like, of course I wish I said yes. Of course. Did I really mean it? No. And yeah. like honestly at this point sitting here, saying I don't was like the only option for me and thankfully like I woke the fuck up two days before my wedding day literally so I don't know I just think that like I think about that of how much I trusted him in those moments and I was like I have a lot of things on you that out of respect for your family mm -hmm. I can't reveal yeah and I won't reveal but you can't do that to me because you have no control over your emotions. Yeah. And that's the sad part is no matter how other people act, we can't waver from our values and be like, yeah, oh, 100%. I, of course, we want to be petty and literally put everything out there and be like, I could destroy you. No, but I think about that all the time. We're never going to do that. I mean, to that degree. Well, it's I mean, like here and there, it's sharing a life experience and sharing things with each other and our pod besties is so different because I think we can connect with people in a different way. It's never to be like, hey, this is the drama yeah. and being petty. But, but anyways. I know this is like coming out of nowhere. I want to thank our pop besties because I feel like you've always had her back or have been so understanding, especially those of you out there who have been in toxic, unhealthy relationships as well, yeah. have been so confused, have been in this cycle where you are like, you know, staying in the relationship and then you're fighting and then you still, you know, like it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I feel like the people who get it, get it. And I love that we're able to talk about it, though, because it has been a pivotal moment in our lives in terms of how we've changed. And I think a lot of the times why we bring it up is we love talking about the progress we've made, but hopefully it's some it's something that can resonate with you or someone out there, one of our pod besties can relate to who have gone through it or are going through it now. Yeah, it's almost like a survival guide so, for other people. Yeah. If I mean, we're still surviving it. But, <laughs> but if you're going I mean. through it, leave him. Leave her <laughs> him. <laughs> I feel like the summer is when I spend the most money because these are the months that I'm traveling, doing activities outside, having a little mimosa on a patio. And if you're like me, a chime checking account can help you reach your financial goals while still enjoying your summer. In a past episode, Natalie told a story about how in college, she one time overdrafted her checking account and had to pay over $100 in fees. But chime allows you to overdraft up to $200 with no fees. I really wish I had a Chime account back then. So this is how it works. Just set up direct deposit into your Chime account. After a qualifying direct deposit of $200 plus, Chime will notify you to enroll in SpotMe. With an activated debit card, Chime will spot you up to your limit when you exceed your balance and your next direct deposit is applied to your negative balance. The best part is Chime never charges fees or interest for using SpotMe. 
Live it up this summer and make progress towards your financial goals with Chime. Open your account in minutes at chime.com slash out of the pods. That's chime.com slash out of the pods. Chime feels like progress. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in Spot Me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosures for details. Let's get into Perfect Match Season 2. Woo! First of all, the fact that there is six episodes. Yeah, why did they put out six episodes last week? I don't know, but there's six last week. This week, there's two more, and then the finale is, you know, in next week. Next week. Oh, I'm so surprised they put out six because, you know, they're making my life really hard. I mean, they did that (laughs) with Love is Wine season six. Yeah, but I don't know why Perfect Match is like different. I think because I don't know. My theory is that. Not a lot of things happened in the first six episodes. So Mm -hmm. they're just like, let's just put it out. Yeah, because there was like so much happening. Okay, let's get into it. What are your overall thoughts? What did you take away from the first six episodes so far? Mm -hmm. Um, I did not enjoy (laughs) the first six episodes compared to season one. Really? Perfect match. Even though your ex was on it. (laughs) Yes. Okay, yeah. That's that's a little (laughs) bit weird for me to say. Um, I just felt like the personalities on season one were much more unique and like relatable. Like I really liked Chloe on season one. Mm-hmm. She's like super vivacious, even though she dated my ex on the show. But, you know, we follow each other on social media. We met, had a long conversation. Love that girl. Um, Joey Carousel, tons of energy. Oh, you know, I they're just them. like so fun to watch. Yeah. Inez, we had her on the podcast, but so mature. is She's kind of like that girl you either relate to or want to be like Mm -hmm. Francesca was just a good villain Savannah was great too it's just like it was made up of a cast where they were so messy but it was so high energy you loved it and I don't feel that from anyone from this cast aside from Tolu okay so first of all I love Tolu I think she's so like she has such beautiful energy about her oh one thing I did want to mention supposedly she got a really bad edit on the trust which is the Netflix show she's from yeah so she actually explained that she said that like on the trust she wasn't very trusting (laughs) Mm. so it kind of came off as if like she was questioning everyone's like loyalty kind of that kind of vibe but the trust is such a different type of show no I know so I feel like but I absolutely love her her. on Perfect Match season two and I kind of have a different take on this season than you I like season two better why I think season one kind of like I was biased because I knew so many of the reality stars whereas here on this season like I just knew a few of them like I didn't really know much of the cast because I don't really watch Too Hot to Handle I didn't watch Trust I didn't watch you know, The Circle, whatever. I didn't watch any of these shows. So I was like, they're all new characters. One downside to new characters is I have to like spend the time getting to know them and to actually like them. But because there were six episodes, I actually started to like some of these characters. I was like, oh, Tolu, fave. I freaking love her. I was so excited to see Dom coming back for this season. because He disappointed me. Because I did a podcast with Dom for Dom Meets World. Oh, right. And we had the best time ever on this podcast. I absolutely loved him. Such amazing conversation. And he's like genuinely a good guy. But I was so disappointed watching him. I was just really confused about his actions. (sighs) Like the way he just went from really liking Tolu or acting like he really liked Tolu. And then he went all cold. So cold, You know, it just felt like very like. I understood where her anger and frustrations were coming from. Yeah. Um, about her relationship with him. I know, like, technically on the show, you know, it's really, it, you know, they only know each other for, like, one or two days. Yeah, it's literally, I think she was basing it off of one date, but still. But still, it's, like, it's, the fact he just, like, transitioned on her real quick. Jump shipped so fast, yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It, it was really weird. And it kind of sucks, and I feel bad for him that, like, 
the other girl that he went for um alara alara also you know went a different way he, she didn't match with dom which was like kind of sad but that kind of proves like dom don't like stray away from your good guy persona because that's i know that deep down he is that person i think he was going way too much with strategy and he was like well last time i got effed over because i played with my heart this time i'm gonna play you know, with my mind and play strategy. I'm like, no, Dom, no. Well, can I bring up a DM we got from one of our pop besties about Dom? They said, why is Dom back? Doesn't he know that you can either die a hero or live long enough to be a villain? Ooh. <laughs> I don't think Dom is a villain, though. He's not, but he is getting a villain arc but right now. But he's not getting the edit he did in season one. I feel like people watched season one of Perfect Match and really liked him. And yeah, season two, he kind of just like disappears in these first six episodes with yeah. not the best impression. No. And you know what I did think, though? Like, you know how Tolu kind of went off on him in the boardroom? Yeah. When they were chatting, I felt like they did edit that in a certain way where they left it with Tolu having this empowering moment. I do feel like. Dom probably said something back to her to kind of like be like, hey, like, yeah. I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. But I think they like might have cut that piece out. I think they did so that when he walked back to the house and she didn't come with him, like it would that was the surprise that yeah. she like sent herself on another date. Right. Exactly. I do have to say I found myself really rooting for our Love is Blind cast. I did too. Well, I did. Uh, I really did. I like Micah. I so I met Micah earlier this year and we developed a friendship. But in terms of the Micah on Perfect Match season two, I just want to preface this because I was like, I'm biased, obviously. Yeah. But I did. I do really like her on the show. Me I mean, too. she's kind of like staying out of drama. I will say, though, I think a little bit might have to do with the fact that they filmed Perfect Match season two in September 2023. Mm -hmm. So it was a few months after. Love is Wine season four came out, the season where she was known as a mean girl. She was known as one of the villains. People really didn't take to her. And I feel like she kind of learned from that from more of like a TV standpoint. And she's like, I got to kind of like stay out of the mess. Really? You thought she stayed out of the mess when she um, broke up uh, Harry and Elise? <laughs> I feel like that's, <laughs> that's just a, that like- That was the, a good power move, actually. I feel like that's just like the name of the show where they're like, yeah, no, no one takes it seriously, whatever, like, it happens yeah. all the time and you could tell people are cool with it. Uh, I don't know because Elise literally, I okay, first of all, can I just say Elise is so funny to me because she literally is in the game just to F with Harry. She's like, I don't even care about finding love. I just don't want Harry to win. No, 100%. <laughs> and what we know about Harry now, I'm like, you know what? You do you, girl. I know. If we didn't know what Harry has done to other women, if all these allegations did not come out from his exes, I feel like I'd be like, I feel a little bit bad and yeah. it's a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. But now I was like, you know what? He probably deserves it. Yeah, especially the way probably he Probably deserves it. When he was breaking up with her, the way he talked to her was like, if you love someone, set them free. And then laughed and left. I was like, Harry, Harry, But I Harry. will say to his defense, they had only really been dating in quotations for like two days. No, it was a week. Oh, really? They were together the entire week. Well, that's Because it was different. episode three that just came in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she was like we've been together for all week harry like what the hell and he's like oh well things happen okay but. to his defense though the whole point of the show is to find your perfect match and yeah. it's like everyone's switching up like it happens oh, I agree. and also let's be fucking for real Every single person on the show is not actually there to find their perfect match yeah. there's a reason why season one's couples broke up either the day the show ended filming or they waited one or two weeks. Yes. Like, that's, I'm sorry, that's yeah. the show. Everyone knows you go on the show. Even when we talked to Netflix, Universe Stars, when I was in casting for Perfect Match season two and I was talking to other potential cast members, everyone knew, hey, just go on the show to like extend your relevancy. Make your money. Make your money. Clout. They pay you way more than you know, they did for um, Love is Blind. And mm -hmm. so it really kind of is that. Like, everyone knows. Like, everyone knows, like, these relationships don't last Yeah, and we've talked about it before. I yeah. don't think anyone's trying to go on the show to find love. Except for Tolu. Yeah, except for Tolu, yeah. But I really think she was going on there to find her person. But with Elise, I'm like, why I was kind of, like, leaning towards Harry's side a little bit is because I just feel like 
she wasn't necessarily angry at the fact that he wanted to move on to Jess. I think it was the fact that she didn't have someone to match with to keep her in the house. Mm. And she had to go find someone else. See, I took it the other way. I was like, obviously, Harry's welcome to do whatever, obviously. And they did put Jess in front of him, who is exactly his type to a T. You know that was producer push. Oh, 100%. You know they told Micah, like, pick Jess. 100%. I I thought that was, like, such a little plant, too. But... I think Elise is upset because of the and created this vengeance because because of the way he broke up with her. Yeah. The fact that he ignored her the whole time, even though they've been close all week. Totally. He's like kissing her. Hey, love. See you later, love. Like you create. Yeah. A f- it's a feeling of like being wanted by somebody that you like. And then being disrespected. Yeah. And then being disrespected when as soon as somebody comes in, it's the way he did it. And then her laughing at her. I was like, bro, please. But. Again, can I just say, watching these entire six episodes, I've realized like how much of a mind fuck this game is. Like, yes, it's all strategy, but there are, I'm sure there's like so many insecurities highlighted because obviously everyone's attractive, but for all of them to switch up so fast, it's just like such a, it would fuck me up. I could never do the show. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why I don't like this show? (laughs) Please. Compared to like Bachelor in Paradise and even yeah. like Love Island, because I think they're making the show so raunchy to be more like a Love Island or yeah. like Fuckboy Island, like who mm-hmm. knows. Um, but the reason why is they bring up staying in the house so much. Like, I need to stay in the house. I need to stay in the house. So yes. you know that these matches aren't for love. Mm-hmm, exactly. Even if like we all know that people do reality TV show probably more for the cameras and love, like on Bachelor in Paradise and Love Island. But the thing is, I feel like those couples on those shows feel more genuine than people on Perfect Match being like, I need to stay in the house. It feels more like a game and they're just matching up and kind of putting up a front or pretending yeah. to really like their partners because they just want to stay in the house because staying in the house means more screen time mm-hmm. and then more Instagram followers and, you know, more of the ability to like if you came as a villain from your previous show to kind of like clean up your image exactly or it can backfire on you or backfire which is insane but no it's very risky and also the prize at the end of the show is not like it's a great prize no the prize is more like more social media clout yeah and it's like geared towards um like a couple vacation and i'm sure like they can get money or like money equivalent to it. But again, all of these people that are on this show have done a show before. So it's not like they're there for the money or the trip. So it's very interesting to see how they're acting. And I don't know. It's like it is it's been entertaining to watch for sure. But but I'm I don't think there's going to be any like real couples that come out of it except for I'm only rooting for one of the couples at this point that I think are actually like falling in love. Who? It's Alara and Stefan. 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 I, I actually really like him. I don't trust him. I do. I actually do. Anyways, there was a comment we received in our DMs um, just about like a lot of the gross comments that Netflix left in, which are just like very misogynistic or inappropriate in general. Like when Harry Jowsey said, one time Stefan cream pied Holly. Like, what the fuck? Why leave that in there? Yeah, there was a lot of really, really raunchy moments. I literally, I would find myself being like, jaw open. No, like, that's like, why I was like, I just don't like love this show. Yeah. And because of that, it feels very like they're trying to make all these people look really dumb. This no. is not a family show. <laughs> no, it you. just felt like, I don't know, just it, it was like it's so different from Love is Blind, but it yeah. felt like they were just trying to make it this like raunchy show, especially with like the truth or dares and all the games. It just like felt so forced. Like, why are you trying to sexualize everyone? And mm-hmm. also, why are you like also like sexualizing these women to this degree I agree. and the men too it did just- you uh, you know what i did notice during that kissing challenge game which is ugh, disgusting to me oh yeah i hate um, that um 
I could tell, I don't know, obviously this is just me, my interpretation of watching everyone's facial reactions, but when Nick announced that they were doing this challenge, I could see everyone's face being like, fuck, like I really don't wanna do this. Like th that's just the vibe I got. No one's like, yay, I'm so excited for this, you know? I, ugh, that was like an icky thing, yeah. but obviously they're doing it for, they have to, but. So Harry crying after Jess wanted to have a conversation about his authenticity when it came to being on the show and being in relationships. What did you think about that? Him just like having a breakdown and being like, I want to leave. Um, I think honestly, uh, it, it was hard for me to decipher if it was all for show and he's trying to gain empathy from Jess just to keep her in this relationship with her. Yeah. Or if it's genuinely he's feeling so overwhelmed because he's thinking in the back of his mind like, oh my God, are they going to fuck me over? Like they're bringing up all the things that happened in the past. They're kind of painting me out to be this bad guy. Like, is it going to bite me in the ass that I did this show? So I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I want to believe that he's a very... I want to believe that he's a genuine guy and that he's there for the right reasons. I just know based no, on his track not. record and the history of how he's treated women on reality TV that Jess is not any different than all of these other women. So one of our pop besties DM'd us, Harry crying about how everyone is questioning his authenticity and doesn't like him is gaslighting. That was so crazy that he did that to Jess. And I kind of agree. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like he didn't want to have a full conversation about like, why the women are saying he is not genuine and he just started crying to like avoid it yeah. and like to make her feel bad like why are you questioning me instead of like really having an adult conversation about it mm -hmm. i also think that it is extremely suspicious that care that harry comes on the show and talks about how much he has changed he now wants to find a wife i'm dating like, blah, to blah, marry blah. yeah and i was like Bro, you came on a show where the track record of really finding someone is zero. Like, I felt like it was definitely an act. Yeah. And I feel like, again, because this show filmed last year and so many things have come out since then from his exes and also things that he has, he has said on his podcast, I mean, it's very clear that he hasn't changed. And a lot of what he says, I feel like it's his, like, thing to just say, like, I'm trying to find my wife. Yeah. No, you can. And the actions never match. And it's crazy how people believe like, wow, he's really just changed. If this show was airing two years ago, I feel like I would be more inclined to believe that Harry has changed or like he's looking for someone to marry. He's dating to marry. But I honestly think that because of what has come out in the media, what happened with Riley, um, Francesca, Georgia, it can't be that all of these women are lying. There's clearly a pattern. And what was the nail in the coffin for me in this last episode on episode six of Perfect Match? I was like, holy shit. I know now that Harry's not there for the right reasons. Obviously, it's Perfect Match was when Dom realize like he's about to leave remember what he says to Jess yeah and he him? goes what reasons are you here for yes and that starts the fight and he was like so 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 like stone cold faced about it yeah because Dom obviously knows people have been calling Harry out for doing this shit forever yeah and so it's like I really want to believe him because he's like so sweet and charismatic but clearly no I know that was kind of like a wild moment I think Dom was trying to like cover for himself being like no I meant everyone here but yeah. it felt like a like a Freudian slip type of thing yeah but do you think Jess sees it though because we did also receive this DM about Jess from one of our pot besties it says if Jess was serious about finding someone serious why did she as a 29 year old mom join a show mostly made up of 22 23 24 25 year olds also i don't like that she uses her daughter as an excuse to act like she's so serious about finding love she already saw season one of perfect match and knew what type of show this is it's giving inauthentic Ooh, that's a tough critic i think I, I'm not going to just call her out because I think most of the cast, if not all of them, are not serious about finding love on this show. They just know it's the right thing to say and act yeah. like they are. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if it's a nice surprise where they do find a potential partner, yeah. like, that's great, too. But um, I do I do feel like maybe she likes Harry, but also knows like she needs Harry to stay in the house. So maybe she's more forgiving of like 
kind of the red flags because yeah. I'm sure she's playing the game too, where everyone's trying to stay in the house. That's what I was. That's what I was gonna say too. I think that, and again, I don't know Jess whatsoever. So like, these are all assumptions based on just what I've seen. I feel like her going on perfect match. She probably knows in the back of her mind that this isn't for finding love. If she does find it, great. But because she has a daughter, I think there's more skin in the game for her. You know what I mean? It's like more serious. I do think that she, in the back of her mind, going through the experience right now, she's probably like, oh, shit. Like, I know there's red flags with Harry, but I'm going to try to just continue on and, like, take it with a grain of salt. Like, you know what I mean? Like, keep yeah. it surface level. I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard to say, but I'm hoping that she's smart enough to realize that, like, Harry's not going to change for her. Like, don't think you're going to be a yeah. fix the hoe. You know what I mean? Like, it's. I know. It's, like, when he started crying and she goes, like, I can't believe, like, I made him feel less than. And I'm like, no, you should you not apologize. He should have that conversation with you because it's a valid concern. Yeah. Like, if anything, the red flag is the fact he's shutting down, kind of gaslighting you yeah. and like not having the conversation of why people are questioning his authenticity, though. I do feel like it's a little bit hypocritical because everyone should look at themselves when I say everyone, everyone on the cast and be like, mm -hmm. why am I also doing this show um, when it comes to Jess? I love the fact that she's a single mom, but I do feel like. It is tough because she says something about how, you know, she has an impressionable young daughter at home when she's talking about um, how she wants to find a serious relationship yeah. and she needs a good one. She's having that conversation with Harry. But then they're playing the truth bombs game and it's revealed that Jess one time got engaged to someone just because they were rich. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know. It's like it's tough because yeah. like, yeah, you could bring up your daughter and be like, this is why I need the good things. But then sometimes you like are doing the opposite of that on a very public platform. I do. I, I don't know exactly why she's doing this show, but I'm assuming it's a good opportunity for her to just put herself out there more when it comes to like social media, brand deals, all these things. There's all of the people on this show are there for that. But I do hope that just doesn't get hurt in the process because Harry is very charismatic and very easy to fall in love with. Like he's a beautiful human being and you know it's it's easy to fall under that spell but i hope she's realizing that like it's not authentic well we kind of know how it ends i mean it was kind of revealed right um we're gonna do a little spoiler alert <laughs> three two one but Jess and Harry do date like after the show because those photos were leaked of them mm -hmm. again earlier this year and Harry also talked about Jess on his podcast. I mean, we talked about it as well, like what he had to say in that like he had an ex who got mad at him for like being flirty or like all the rumors about him and his Dancing with the Stars dancing partner, Riley. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of know that he like did not treat her well. Yeah. Oof. And so it, it sucks. So, like, again, I feel like People don't change. They could talk about how they're going to change, but if they don't show it, like, probably not. Especially not in a reality TV space. Like, come on. It's, yeah. Okay, wait. Can I just say, I actually really enjoyed watching Izzy on the first episode. <gasps> I felt so bad for him. Me too, but he was like, to Tolu, Tolu was so sweet towards him. And, like, I really wish she stayed with Izzy because obviously Dom wasted her time. But I I don't know why, but I actually had, like, a very soft spot for Izzy. Micah, too, I feel like, especially towards the end of these first six episodes, I felt really bad for Micah. Um, oh, because she had, like, such a genuine connection, it seemed like, with the, with, I don't even remember his name. Kaz. Thank you, Kaz. There's so many names. I'm super confused, like, where the comments about her are coming from. Like, Stefan makes that comment where she's like a sponge. Sponge, yeah. And sucks like, all the fun. <laughs> yeah, sucks all the fun. And like Kaz isn't his best version with her. And it looks like all the men agree. I also heard behind the scenes, and it's not shown on the show so far, but like Harry had this weird like dislike for Micah during filming. 
Oh, weird. Yeah. So I just wonder, like, are we not seeing something that's going on? Because, like, she is perfectly fine on the show. If not, if anything, I am liking her way more than I did on Love is Blind season four. I agree. So I really like her on this. I'm very curious how her and Kaz will turn out, like, or if there's something we're just, like, not seeing on screen of, like, why all these men think that she's kind of, like, a dud. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I have no I idea. I couldn't think of like the nicest word. <laughs> yeah. No, I have no idea what's going on with the behind the scenes or like the cast dynamic of it all. But I was rooting for her and Kaz because they like seem so genuinely connected. But that's the thing with Perfect Match. You enter in temptation because Holly is obviously a stunning beautiful Oh my girl, gosh. But I was like, holy shit. <laughs> How crazy was it when Holly is wearing a similar dress to Micah's? But oh it's like, my God. it's like sexier and a little bit better. Did and you? I was like, oh my gosh. When Tolu makes that comment, that like, was hilarious. Tolu was like, she came in with the impress your man 5000. Yeah, literally. literally. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a TV moment. Honestly, I have to say, Tolu is my favorite one of this entire cast. She's so real, genuine. She's funny. She's there for the right reasons ish. It feels Kinda. like. Under, under yeah. the circumstances. But I feel like her perfect match is not Chris. Chris gives me, I'm sorry, he gives me the ick. Okay. I just, I... I just like, uh, when he says, he just has like an ego about him. I feel like he might not be as genuine as people think he is about Tolu. I feel like it's kind of just for show and to stay in the house, obviously. But I feel like when he says, like, I'm really starting to, like, build a genuine connection with Tolu. I was like, I don't believe you. You're just saying it. Okay, I disagree with you. I hated Chris when he first came into the house. Objectively, Chris is kind of my type. Like, I love, like, a Prince Charming looking man. And then he started talking or not talking, whatever the fuck he was doing. I was like, oh, like he gives me the biggest ick. Like I was like, this is not the type of man I like. Like I love a good personality. Yeah. But then after some time, he kind of started like coming into his own. And I think what got Chris really attracted to Tolu was when they kissed in the kissing challenge. And I feel like they had the best kiss. Like he gave her a 10, whatever. And I think he couldn't stop t- thinking about her after that. I think that's why Mr. Chris has developed a crush on Tolu. Wow. And I think it's kind of genuine. We'll just have to see. We've got four <sighs> more episodes. And yeah. I think what's really tough, look, I think why I'm pessimistic about the show is, I'm not going to lie, I already know kind of yeah, the no, ending. I, I, yeah, yeah, same. Like I just know <laughs> which couples end up together and if there's a future. So it's just, I think it's tough. I think that makes me like question things a lot. No, I think the show is like very take it with a grain of salt. Like don't get too like excited about certain couples. That's how I'm going through watching all of this. Um, it's been interesting though. Some of the characters have been very like entertaining and fun to watch. And Chris Harry being one of them. <laughs> honestly, Chris is Chris is probably one of my favorite characters just to watch. Like, I don't <laughs> like him per se, but he's so out there that I'm like, are you a real person? Yeah. Like, you're probably, yes, doing things for TV, but you are so nutty that <laughs> I kind of love it. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> Okay, before we end, who are your favorites so far? Obviously, Tolu. I yes. Love, 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 love her. Like, Same. ugh, wish her the best. Who's your Who's your top? She's your only favorite? I feel like right now, she's kind of my only favorite. Okay, same. Um, I am rooting for people, though. I am rooting for our Love is Blind cast, just because, you know, there's that connection there. But uh, favorites-wise, Tolu is my favorite. Guys, I'm like, eh, I'm indifferent about all the guys. Okay, same. I feel like Tolu is the only one that I like so far. Um, I'm rooting for Jess to see the light, but we kind of all know how it ends. Um... <laughs> I'm liking Micah and Kaz so far, but I'm a little bit wary. Yeah. I feel like Izzy's coming back. I think that all the cast comes back at some point to have like their last chance. I do love Melinda. I did not watch her season of um, Two Out to Handle, and I didn't see her as a host on Dated and Related, which, by the way, Kaz and Alara and Chris are from Dated and Related. Why are they here? I've because never seen that, that show only had one season, mm-hmm. and I'm like, 
I thought that Susan I'm was sorry done. before we end this did you just say you liked Melinda because she literally came in bulldozing loved on Chris tried to get Chris to like pick her <laughs> and then she's like let me just explore my options talk to every single man in the house that was available and then got upset with Chris for picking our girl Tolu like what I don't know. Melinda's giving me... Melinda's just trying to stay in the house like okay, everyone else. Okay, but like what? But I like mm. Melinda because I feel like she has like an amazing personality. Okay. See, I didn't see any of her personality yet, so... Okay, maybe I'm biased because <laughs> I also see her TikToks a lot. There you go. There but you go. she's... I feel like she's so confident. Mm. She has this like factor of where she's like... She kind of reminds me of like Chloe from Too Hot to Handle too. Okay. They're both just like very... You could tell like goofy... They don't give an F about what people think about them. That sort of like TV personality. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like it. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Um, But yeah, I'd say those are like kind of my two. And then, like I said, I really like watching Chris for some reason. He's just like so kind of like out there and nutty. I love it. I love it. And his stripper moves. Like, thank you. I love you. Thank you for this. (laughs) Yeah. Didi's like, give me give me a call, Chris. (laughs) No. But anyways, what a roller coaster of six episodes so far. But let us know what you guys are thoughts are. Who are your favorites? Who are your not so favorites? Send it to us on our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. And make sure you leave a review and subscribe and continue listening to us, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. See you next Wednesday. Bye.